This presentation is about plotting mathematical functions in Excel. So here's our scenario. We have some function we would like to plot. The function has a variable, in this case r. r models the distance between two uh, atoms' nuclei. And then there are some parameters, in this case epsilon and sigma. We'll see the roles they play toward the end. And we're going to have some specific numbers for this epsilon and sigma, though we want to be able to change them easily in Excel. And this, this formula has the idea that if you get very close, it's going to be large and positive, in case this case repulsive, and then it will have a region of attraction. And we just want to see this in the plot to, to see what this function looks like. As we said, this function has a variable r, standing for the distance between the atoms, and then we want to decide a domain, sort of what r do we want to start at and what r do we want to finish at in our plot. So we are going to choose r starting at 0.2 and r going up to 1. It happens to be in nanometers. And then we also must decide so where to start and where to stop, but sort of how much to go up by with each step. So there might be at certain parts of this function, a lot going on. So we're going to decide to take rather small steps of 0 0.001. So we want to have a lot of points between 0.2 and 1 to, to capture all the features of this function. So we're designing a spreadsheet to plot this function and then to explore the effect of changing these parameters, the epsilon and the sigma. So we put them at the top in, in cells B2 and B3 in this case, and then we have to create our domain. So our variable here was called R, but we're going to make an XY scatter plot. So I will often also refer to this as the X's. So we have to make our, our, our set of X's. And so we're going to start at point two, and we're going to show different approaches for establishing this domain. So in this first one, I set up in A6, uh, the point two, the starting point, and then in A7, I'm entering the formula equal A6 plus 0 0.001. That was our step. And then I'm going to copy that formula down until I get to my ending point of one. A second approach to establishing the domain is to start with our value in A6, our starting point of point two, and then go to A7 and put in the next uh, desired value, 0 0.201, and then highlight the two cells, A6 and A7 together. Get the thin cross, the fill handle, uh, down there in the corner of A7 with A6 and A7 highlighted. Get into the corner of A7, get the, the thin black cross, and then pull down and Excel will pick up the pattern and repeat it and then pull down until you get to your final result, in this case one. And a third approach for establishing the domain is to again start in A6 with the starting value of 0.2 and then make sure you're, you're on the home item in the menu and then go over and find the, the fill item down there under the sum, under that sigma button, there's a fill, and uh, under the fill, there's a series. Then in the series dialog box, choose columns, then fill in the step value for us, 0 0.001, and a stop value, in our case, 1, and click OK. So after we've established the domain, the x's, now we want our y's, our function. And so we're going to go, in this case, to b6 and enter our formula. So this happens to be the formula for the Leonard-Jones potential. And note the use of the dollar signs when we are using the parameters. So the parameters were in b2 and in b3, so where the epsilon and the sigma appeared in the original formula, where epsilon appeared, we put in b2, and where sigma appeared, we put b3, but we include a dollar sign so that when the formula is copied down from a6 to a7, etc., the 
B2, B$2, the 2 will not change. Similarly, the B$3, the 3 will not change. So we're entering our function in B3. We're establishing our Ys to, to use in our XY scatter plot. So next we want to make an XY scatter graph of our XY data down there in columns A and B. And we know that the first step in this is to highlight the two columns, and we usually do that by dragging, but I want to show you an alternative. So if you are under the Home menu, and then you go over to the right and find the Find and Select uh, item, and then choose Go To from the drop-down list, that brings up the Go To dialog box, and then down in the reference section down there at the bottom of the dialog box, you can type the range that you want. So we wanted to start in A6 and go over to B806, so A6 colon B806, and click OK. This is a way to uh, grab a large range without dragging. And it's also useful for non-consecutive dragging. So next we want to tease out some of the features of this function by controlling the way Excel plots it and also to understand the parameters, the epsilon and the sigma. So toward this end, let's take the minimum of the y values. So in cell A6, we're entering the formula equals min open parenthesis B6 colon B806 close parenthesis. These are the y values. And the min value is coming out to be minus 0.65017 and compare this to the epsilon parameter in B2. So that epsilon controls that minimum value. There's actually a little dip in the function that we're missing by looking at it on the scale that we originally have. So let's right click on the y axis and change the minimum and the maximum. Let's go from minus one to two, and then let's do the same on the x axis and go from zero to one. So we came to terms with what the epsilon parameter was. It was the, the absolute value of the, the minimum uh, y value, the, the minimum of the function. And now we want to come to terms with what the sigma does. And the sigma is going to turn out to be the sort of roughly the horizontal position of the minimum. So where the minimum occurs, and the epsilon will be how deep it is, and the sigma will be where it occurs, more or less. And so we're going to play the game of finding, finding this minimum. And so for that purpose, we're going to uh, in D7, we're going to enter the formula to equal average A6 colon A7 and enter the copy that down. And that's just going to get us a value between 0.2 and 0.201 and, and so on for as we go down. So the average would be 0 0.2005. In E7, we're entering the formula equal parentheses B7 minus B6 slash divided by a parenthesis a7 minus a6. So this is a change in y over a change in x. It's a rise over a run. It's a it's a slope. And so and we're copying that down. And this is also what we call a derivative. And so we're copying, so we have a derivative in E, and then the derivative is sort of, and then we have the point in D that is sort of where that derivative is. Now we're just scrolling down in our data to find out in column B where that minimum we found uh, actually occurs within the data. And so we see it there in row 161. And it's around uh, the X or the R is 0.355. Not exactly R, a sigma parameter, but close to it. And then we look over into the D and E columns and we see in E that that this minimum occurred where the E changed sign. It was negative and then it becomes positive. And this is just an idea from calculus, if you happen to know it, that a minimum in a function occurs when a derivative uh, changes sign or when it uh, passes through zero. And now let's go back to just sort of playing with our 
parameters. So let's change the parameter and watch the uh, XY scatter plot uh, adjust. And so if I raise the epsilon value to one, you see the minimum of that dip now going down towards minus one. So that parameter is the depth of the well. And when I change the sigma parameter, now I've changed it to 0.4, it is moving that dip horizontally. So it, again, it's not exactly where the dip occurs, but it's uh, related to the dip and it sort of pushes it, changing it pushes the dip over. And here I'm just showing some of the references I used, the first one for the Leonard Jones potential itself, and then the other two references for Excel, the sort of the filling and the selecting.